after month, our God attends us and supports us. For God's company, we offer thanks and praise. Let us worship the God who gives us Jesus Christ. God who is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the, li the living one and our Redeemer, now and forever. Amen. Our praise song is, Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. If you want for, for a moment, just think of all the things for which you have to be thankful. That should just make you want to say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so good. Undeserving me. Undeserving me. So we say, Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. So please lift your voices. As we sing, all oh, give thanks. Amen.
morning, Bailey Chapman. Good morning. Good morning, Bailey Chapman. Good morning. Oh, it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, it is. I am so grateful to all of you who managed to make it out despite the weight of all that turkey. <laughs> all that turkey. Brave the the cold this morning to come out to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. But open up and however, whatever devices you have and connect with God's people. We give thanks for you. Oh, yes. this, this is our first day of the Advent season, the season of anticipation and remembrance, what, what we often call Christmas time. And I know visiting Walmart, you thought Christmas started back in September. But we're going to start it today, and we're going to praise the Lord in the spirit of the coming of Jesus Christ. Yes. So let's take a moment, my brothers and sisters, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for blessing us to be here. Our Father, we thank you for blessing us to be connected across the miles and distances. Our Father, we thank you for blessing us to be To have another chance to lift up your holy name. To have another chance to hear the word of God proclaimed. To have another chance to praise you and to praise you in the presence of one another. We give you thanks, Father. We ask you, Lord to look on us and to see us. See all the ways in which we go astray. See all the ways in which we fall short, fall short of you, and even sometimes, Lord, fall short of ourselves. Yes. To see us in our brokenness and make us whole. To see us in our sickness, sicknesses of body, sicknesses of mind, sicknesses of culture, and bring healing. See us, Lord, where we don't know better and bless us with knowledge, wisdom, truth. See us in those places where we know better, but we have not been doing better and give us courage, and strength, and diligence, and focus on your righteousness. Help us, Lord, to improve day by day. Make us, Father, better than we have been. Soften our hearts and give us greater stores of compassion, love. Let us forgive and let go and move forward. Lord, allow us to set somebody free of the chains we have placed on. As you set us free of the chains of sin, we are placed on ourselves. See our society and our communities. See our nation in turmoil and soften the hearts of leaders. Let them act with compassion instead of arrogance. Let them act with grace instead of greed. Let them act righteously. No matter what they perceive to be the political consequences, give them courage to do right. Wisdom to see what right is. Awaken in us a spirit of engagement with our communities and our society, with our institutions, with the church, Lord, with you. Let us not be Christians only in word and proclamation, but let us be Christians in spirit and in truth in how we speak, how we live, and how we treat one another. May the difference of your Holy Spirit be evident in each and in all our lives. And may this time we have together, may this hour of worship because every heart and every mind and every soul in such a way that when the benediction is given, when the app is closed, when we go from this moment, we go in greater power, greater love. And we truly represent he who is the reason for the season. May we be made more like Christ. By this time we have, by your grace, by your power, and in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
morning, Brother Tabernacle. Good morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was the Pool of Bethesda, with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew how long he had been ill, he asked him, Would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to help me into the pool when this water is stirred up. While I'm trying to get there, someone else always gets ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your sleeping mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up the mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath day. Thus is the reading of the word, the word of God for other people of God. Amen. 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 Let us now stand and uh, let us uh, reaffirm our faith. What do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Father Almighty the heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered on the Pontius Father, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this it shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Amen. If the students will come and assist for the lighting of the Abbey Candle. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweet friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Advent is a season of anticipation and remembrance. Looking back, we remember the anticipation of our spiritual forefathers who hoped for the promised Messiah. Looking forward, we refresh their anticipation with our own. The world is broken, weighed down by sin and evil. Some days we feel overrun and run over by hardened people, systems, and circumstances. But we have hope. Hope in Jesus' second coming, in righteousness and glory, with all power in his hand. Moreover, we have hope that Jesus will show up in our present situation. As the Lord has protected the faithful to secure the line of Jesus' birth, so we know that God will take care of us, so that we may lay the perfect crown work for Jesus' return. Our hope is built on nothing less. Than Jesus' in blood and righteousness. We light this first advent candle, representing the light of hope that we were remembrance and anticipation. The hope of our Jesus may shine ever brightly in all our lives. Amen. Amen.
Young adults will be giving back to the community next Sunday, December 4th. They will serve 300 people at the community soup bowl. We are asking that you would donate canned goods, bottled water, or make a donation on today and designate it for the Young Adult Project. You'll notice when you came in that there were some donations there in the foyer. If you have not dropped off a donation, then when the offering is taken, uh, we encourage you to give toward the Young Adult Project. There are label bins not only out there, but also in the Ola Mesa. Christmas is on a Sunday this year. Uh, and so we will have special worship service on Christmas Sunday, but worship on Christmas Sunday morning will be early at 9.30 a.m. You are encouraged to dress casually. I mean, not necessarily Walmart casual. I'm not saying wear the pajamas and the negligee, but I mean, you know, um, but become comfortable. Enjoy um, worship. It would be quite a shame if we call Christmas Jesus' birthday and it fell on a Sunday and we couldn't at least celebrate it for a little while. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So we will have worship on Christmas Sunday, but it will be at 9.30 a.m. Um, there will be no Sunday school that day and we'll come in to worship. Um, Dr. Jackie Williams and Sister Brenda Walker have information about the Christmas program and the children. All of that will be incorporated together in the sanctuary. Um, the Tuscaloosa District Board of Christian Education and Formation's fall meeting will be this Saturday, December 3rd at 9.30 a.m. at Star of Bethlehem CME Church. And please remember our weekly Zoom Sunday School on, the, on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. and Bible study, which was on Thanksgiving holiday, will resume this Wednesday at noon and at 6 p.m. All of these, the Sunday school and the Bible study by Zoom. If you do not have those links, text or email me or Regina. Those are all the announcements I have. Are there any others I may have missed? Do we have any visitors with us today? I think I recognize every face I see. Anybody just want to say hey? Hey, <laughs> amen. Um, our Black History Moment this Sunday is Sister Hazel. Sister Hazel. Amen. Come on. Good morning, baby. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody's doing fantastic. All right, so today we will reflect on the life and legacy of Hazel Dorothy Scott, born July 11, 1930 in Trinidad, and later moved to New York at the age of four with her mother. Scott was a child prodigy and received scholarships to study at Juilliard School when she was only eight years old. At this young age, she performed on radio, and the famous Cafe Society. She was renowned as a virtuosic jazz pianist throughout the 30s, 40s, and the 50s. In the 50s, she became the first Black American to host her own TV show called The Hazel Scott Show. She performed jazz, blues, and ballads. She performed with the Count Basie Band. She also experienced success in dramatic acting and classical music. She was nicknamed Flying Fingers, and she was the first to introduce the art of playing two pianos, with one hand with black keys and the other hand with the white keys. Mm -hmm. She was married for 15 years to Adam Clayton Powell, a Baptist minister in New York, uh, who was the New York House of Representatives for Harlem. 
Um, of course, sadly, they divorced in 1960 and they had one child. Along with Lena Horne, Scott was one of the first black women to gain respectable actress roles in Hollywood. She refused to take on roles playing a singing maid. And she turned down her first four roles offered to her for this very reason. She used her status as one of the best known African-American entertainers of her generation to shine a spotlight on issues of racial injustice and civil rights. She is recognized for many of her works, but her album, Relaxed Piano Moves, is most highly regarded by critics today. Her swing style, fusion of jazz and classical influences kept her in high demand for, for performances throughout the end of her life. Singer-songwriter Alicia Keys cited Scott as her inspiration for performances at her 61st Grammy Award saying, I've been thinking about people who inspire me. Shout out to Hazel Scott. I've always wanted to play two pianos. As a civil rights activist, Scott refused to perform in segregated venues when she was on tour. She was once escorted from the city of Austin, Texas by Texas Rangers because she refused to perform with uh, patrons that were separated because they were black and white. And she stated to Time Magazine, why would anybody come to hear me, a Negro, and refuse to sit beside someone just like me? Because of Scott's commitment to civil rights, she was blacklisted, accused of being a communist. To clear her name, she appeared before the House Un-American Committee on September 22nd, 1950, to testify that she was never connected to the Communist Party. But the stress from the false accusations and to avoid political fallout, she moved to Paris in 1957. She did not return to the United States until 1967, after the civil rights movement, and, and th that led to federal legislation for housing and protection of voting rights. Hazel Scott died of cancer at the age of 61 on October 2nd, 1981. She was buried alongside Louis Armstrong, Dizzy Gillespie, and other famous musicians. And this is a brief on the life and legacy of Hazel Scott. Thank you for allowing me to share another moment in Black history. I had not heard of Hazel Scott until a couple of months ago, I was listening to a podcast, and as she read that essay of her history, I was again shocked at how much we weren't told in our schools. Led to believe that the Harlem Renaissance was three people. Led to believe that until Martin Luther King Jr., nobody who was black fought the system. Mm -hmm. Led to believe that the only representations from the early days of Hollywood of black people were maids and minstrels. That everybody just did what they had to do to get a job and that nobody was fighting the system. Mm -hmm. And especially that there were no sisters yeah. who had the audacity, the talent, and the intellect to build a place for themselves where they could fight the system. And it is important for the church, for the black church in particular, but really you ought to be doing this in every church, to be reminded of the places where history has failed us. So it doesn't continue to fail us. And so that our sisters and daughters and mamas and aunties and grandmas know that they not only have, but have always had strong role models. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Yeah. I'm turning over to the hand of our stewards to lift our offering for today.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What a blessed day. What a blessed week it's been. And I know we're starting Advent, but I hope you'll bear with me as I continue to drag some Thanksgiving with me. Because I think it's important that it, it, it just infuses itself in every day, in every part of our life. As we enter into Advent and approach Christmas, Thanksgiving becomes even more important because we need to be thanking God for Jesus. Because without him, what else is there? He saved a wretch like me. So I'm just so thankful. I had a great Thanksgiving, and I hope that you all did too. And I hope you got to just absorb family and the love that they bring throughout this period. This time we're going to turn our praise and worship over to the giving component, which is this, this, this an integral part of worshiping God. You all have been so faithful throughout the year with your tithes and your offerings. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you and to acknowledge you for your giving. You know, when the choir sings really good, it'll you know, get comments on Facebook about the choir. When the pastor preaches that special sermon that touches everybody so deep, you'll get comments on Facebook. People will be talking about it. But we don't give enough accolades to those who give and continue to support God's ministry, God's work. So I just want to take a minute and say thank you so much for all your tithes, your offerings, and the tremendous success of the sacrificial observance. Thank you all so much. So this morning, we still have our baskets at each entrance. There should be envelopes nearby. Hopefully there are pens that you can designate your gifts. If you didn't come prepared to give in person, that's okay because... We now have the Givelify app and the PayPal app. Just look up Bailey Tabernacle CME and make your donations there. And we still have our, have the capacity to receive your donations, your tithes, your offerings, and your special gifts at Bailey Tabernacle CME P.O. Box. 3145 Tuscaloosa, Alabama 35403. Please do not send cash to the mail. We do accept your checks and your money orders. But please designate where and how you'd like your donations to be credited. So, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for this opportunity. Please continue to lift up God in your gifts. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful. Thankful, thankful for an opportunity to come out to lift up your name, to bow our heads and humble our hearts and recognize you, God, as the giver of all that is good and perfect. And to say, Lord, we love you and to acknowledge how much we need you and to ask you, Lord, to bless each one of us that are gathered here, whether in person or electronic means bless us and keep us protect us bless the offerings that were given that we pray that they be used to lift up your kingdom and bless the souls that are in need lord god we love you and we thank you this is my prayer in your son jesus name amen <laughs> Preachers often say that God sits high and looks low. I think we forget that as God is sitting high, looking low, he's also leaning in. Right? Yes, yes. He is listening yes. to us all and listening to us each. And so in this moment, we open the altar and we invite you to speak because God is listening. To share with the Lord whatever it is that is on your heart. To tell him all about it. To ask him 
the hard question that you know you need to ask him because he's listening. And yes, he knows, but like any good father who knows his children, he wants you to actually ask him for them. He wants you to tell him about them. And maybe what you need to say to him is, it's not on your behalf, it's not about what's going on in your life. Maybe there's somebody else's difficulty that you need to bring before the Lord. Maybe you are bearing a burden for somebody else. Whatever it is. Know that God is sitting high, looking low, leaning in. So whether you are bowing wherever you are at, at home, hearing this, whether you are bowing your heads in the pews, or whether you come down to the altar here, take this moment as we prepare ourselves to hear the word of God and talk to God who is listening in your own way. second, love a minute, not an hour, another day, but at this moment with my arms outstretched, I need you to make a way as you have done so many times before. Through a window or an open door, I stretch my hands to thee. Come rescue me. I need you right away. I need you now. I need you now. I need you now. I need you now. Not another second, another minute, not an hour, another day. But Lord, I need you right away if i never needed you before show up and then restore all of the things that i let quit while i was out searching the world for more the truest friend i have indeed you're my best friend i know in thee i stretch my hands to thee come rescue me i need you right away the agony of being alone Fear of doing things on my own. The tested trials that come to make me strong. The feelings of guilt, hurt, shame, and defeat. The way the world beats upon me. 
but to know, Lord, in you, I've got the victory. I need you now, Lord, I need you now. Oh, I need you now, I need you now, need you now. Oh, not another second, another minute. Can't wait another day. So please make a way, make a way, Lord. I need you right now, Lord. Need you right now. I need you right now, Lord. Need you right now. Come into my life. Say, say, come into my heart. Come into my life. Say. I need you now. Say it. Say it. Say it. Ooh. Ooh. Need you, Lord. Need you right now. Come into my life, come into my heart, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the contemporary of saying, way of saying, Lord, I need you. But our ancestors, they did another thing. They said, I need you, Lord, right now. Most precious Lord, I need you, Lord, right now. Most precious Lord, temptations lose their power. I need you now, said I need you now, oh bless me, bless me now my Savior, I come. To thee. When I came to Bailey Tavern. I started meeting everybody. I met these preachers who had retired and had years and experience beyond mine who came to me all together and said, you the pastor. We are here to support whatever you are doing. And first of all, that's not always what preachers say to the new pastor. And then one of those preachers got sick. <laughs> and then he got sicker. Yes, yes. 
And he got down in pain and we've had some serious conversations when he was just hurting, not just hurting, hurting. You ever been hurting, hurting? Mm -hmm. yes. And he couldn't come out and do stuff. And he couldn't go and do stuff. And he was laid up, couldn't do anything. And black men, especially Southern black men, we're built to hurt. We, we'll, we'll work through pain that we shouldn't be working through. Yeah. But weakness, we, we, don't, we ain't good with weakness. <laughs> with not being able to do. Yeah. And then the best he could do was a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And then the best he could do was a walk. Then he started walking cool with his cane. Yes. <laughs> because through the weakness and the sickness and the pain, that preacher stayed faithful to God and God stayed faithful to that preacher. Yes, yes, yes. And a few weeks ago, it's been more than a month at this point, this preacher came to me and said, Pastor, I think I got one more in me. <laughs> I think it might be more than one, but we just gonna work with that one. Yeah. <clears throat> and so today, I want to present to you, I am honored to introduce to you the preacher for this hour, Reverend Joseph Page Singh. <clears throat> Reverend Joseph Page Sr. is the third of seven children born to the late Clifferson Page Sr. and Mrs. Eloise Page in Tuscaloosa. His mom brought him up in Sunday school and church at St. Mark AME Church. Graduated from Jewett High School in 1964 and enlisted into the United States Army Airborne. After the military career, he returned to Tuscaloosa and attended C.A. Fred in Brick Masonry. Retired from the VA in 1995, receiving many accolades for his work there with the veterans. He received his calling to preach, or I should say, he stopped running from his calling <laughs> to preach. In 1996, attended Daniel Payne School of Ministry, and after uniting in marriage to who was then Alice Thomas. What's that? <laughs> He followed her on over here to Bailey Tabernacle. He was ordained an elder in the senior church in 2007. And while this help permitted, he was very active in the prison ministry, bus ministry, Sunday school, and the one. Reverend Page, a father, a grandfather, and a great grandfather. This man comes to us for 26 years in ministry. And though he retired from ministry three years ago, he is still serving the Lord. Amen. So when I say preach Reverend Page, I want y'all to say back. Won't he do it? Preach Reverend Page. Preach Reverend Page. Won't he do it? Preach Reverend Page. Please. Praise the Lord and welcome. I preach for the hour with Reverend Joseph Page. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I did tell Reb I wanted to do this. I had one more in me, but I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> I don't know what I got in me. But here I stand. To Reverend Graves, Mrs. Graves, <laughs> Reverend Lewis. Mrs. Lewis, <laughs> Reverend Wilson, Mrs. Wilson, is she out there? Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Wilson and Reverend Brown. I greet you all in the master's name of Jesus the Christ. And Bailey, Amen. I greet you also. Uh, 
I know it's day after Thanksgiving, too late after Thanksgiving. Like everybody seems a little, a little uh, stuffed, I'd say. But I'm going to use, I'm going to start off with this little prayer, this little joke out there, pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. One that I never see and I never see again. Heavenly Father, just let me down in your storehouse of knowledge and speak to your people and tell them what you want me to say. I actually pray in the name of the masters, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> well, that was an old a man walking along the ledge. And somehow he slipped on this ledge and fell down. And as he was falling, he grabbed hold to a branch. And he started hollering, help, help. Is anybody up there? Is anybody up there? And the man said, hold on, hold on. I'm here. And who are you? He said, I'm God. Oh, oh, God, if you just get me down, I'll praise you forever. Mm. So hold on, Joe, with the promises. Let me get you down first. Joe, let go of that branch. Then he got quiet for a while. Then Joe started hollering again. Help, help. Is anybody else up there? <laughs> And uh, God said, Joe, just let go. Is anybody else up there? <laughs> so don't be like Joe. Let go and let God. Mm -hmm. But my subject today, I'm going to use the topic, hold on. Hold on. Help is on the way. Hold on. Help is on the way. Let me put this down. <clears throat> we find Jesus returning to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish religious holidays. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was Bethesda Pool, mm -hmm. with five covered platforms or porches surrounding it. Crowds of sick folks, lame, blind, or with paralyzed limbs, lay on this platform waiting for a certain movement of the water. We've often called it the stirring of the water. For an angel of the Lord came down at a certain season and disturbed the water. And the first person to step into the water after it was stirred was healed. Hold on. Help's on the way. <laughs> one, of the man, one of the men lying there had been there for 38 years. Hmm. Can you imagine being laying around the lane for 38 years? Hmm. I mean, some of us had hang, hang there 38 years. <laughs> some of us had corns on our toes 38 years. That's a long time to be laying there waiting on someone to heal the water and put you in. But there he lay. And when Jesus saw him, he knew how long he had been ill. He asked him one question. Would you like to get well? Mm -hmm. But he said, I can't. That's a word that we always told us, it's not in your vocabulary, can't. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, every time I try to get in the water, somebody stepped in ahead of me. Mm -hmm. When the water, when the movement of the water, while I'm trying to get there, someone else gets in for me. I can't. But Jesus had only one person in mind that day. He came to heal the impotent man. Roll up your sleeping mat and go home. Hold on. Help it on the way. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his mat and began walking. But at this pool, let's go back a little bit. At this pool with the five porches, it was a perfect place for the sick and others lay daily waiting for the angel of the Lord to come down and trouble the water. 
These people put their faith in the water after it was troubled. These people had to have friends because they could not get there by themselves. Someone had to come and bring them there every day and take them back home. But they put their trust in those friends mm -hmm. and put their trust in the water after it was troubled. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Helped on the way. Mm -hmm. The one that had lain there the longest because they had no one to help them before they get in the water was too late or they got in at all. So that means they had to carry them back home again. And they had to come back again the next day and wait for someone to trouble the water. The waters are, are then healing when they are in motion. We as ministers stir up the gift that is in us. We are cold and dull in our ministrations. The waters sell and are not apt to heal. The angel descended and stirred the water during this special season. The operation of the medicine, whoever first stepped in was made whole. Mm -hmm. He that stepped in first had the benefit, not those that stepped in later or lingered behind or didn't get in at all. The patient for this cure was the one who had been infirmed for 38 years. He was lame longer than some people lived. His infirmity, he had lost the use of his limbs. Hold on. Help Help on, the on the way. way. But he was in a, for a rude awakening. When Jesus came to Jerusalem, he visited hospitals, not palaces. An indication that he came into the world to seek and save the sick and the wounded. Mm -hmm. There were great multitudes of crippled people at the pool. But he had his eyes on one particular person, the infirm man. Mm -hmm. Christ delights to help the helpless. This man had often been disappointed of a cure. Therefore, Christ took him on as a patient. It is his honor to side with the weakest. He knew and considered how long he had lain in this condition. He asked him, will thou be made whole? A strange question to ask a person who had been lain sick for so long. Mm -hmm. This was done to show pity and concern for him. In some spiritual cases, people are not willing to be cured of their sins. If they were willing to be made whole, the work would be done, but Christ is willing to heal if we are willing to be healed. Yeah. The impotent man says, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool. One would think that some of those who had healed would help him. He says, when he is coming, another steps in before him. Mm -hmm. Just a step between him and a cure. And yet, he remained impotent. That reminds me of the saying, every man for himself. Having been so often disappointed, he begins to despair. Now it's Christ's time to come to his relief. Yet still, he continued lying by the poolside, hoping that sometime or someone would help him. Oh, Lord Jesus, cures him with the word. The word he said was, take up your bed and walk. Mm -hmm. A strange command to give an impotent <clears throat> man that had been so long disabled. When Jesus commanded him to rise and walk, he must attempt to do so. And he should receive strength to do it. If he had not attempted to do it himself, he would not have been cured. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yep, Helps the only way. way. Mm -hmm. When he did get up and walk, it was not by his own strength, but the power of Christ. Yeah. Three points from these scriptures. First, Jesus' word, take up your bed, to make it appear that it was a perfect cure and purely miraculous. For he did not recover strength by degrees, but from the extremity of weakness and impotency, he suddenly stepped into the highest degree of bodily strength. He who this minute was not able to turn himself over in the bed, the next minute was able to carry his own bed. Mm. Hold on. All right. on the way. <clears throat> Secondly, he put his trust in the water after the angel of the Lord disturbed it. He also put his trust in so-called friends to bring him to the pool daily and someone to put him in the pool. Third, we must put our trust in the Lord. Oh, yeah. 
Wait, I said, wait on the Lord, and he will give you the desires of yes. your heart. I have, a, before I end this, I have a story. All of us, we've not have raised on the farm. We visit the farm. And we know how the animals would take to over. They were like, like one of the family. Mm -hmm. This guy had this old goat. And uh, this old goat would follow him everywhere he went. So he started off going to town. And look back at the river mirror. And now with this old goat running behind the truck. So he said, wait a minute, he took, took back, went back home and tied the old goat. And uh, he got back in the truck, looked in the mirror, that old goat was again. So he said, uh, I know what I'll do. He had an old dug well. You know, you draw your water from the well. You know what I'm talking about. Some of us don't know, but anyway, your water came from the well. But the well was dried up. So he tied... He tied the, the uh, goat to a, you know, tied the head and tied pretty good. But somehow he got away again. And then he walked off and stepped over in this dug well. And uh, when the farmer got back, he called old goat. You know, y'all had name. Come here, Billy. <laughs> hey, Billy. <laughs> Billy didn't say that. And old Billy was on the way around, so he said, uh, he heard a bad. He stepped around and picked over that old dog uh, well, and that was the old goat. So he got a shovel and start packing all the dirt into the, and as he would put the dirt in on the old goat, old goat would just shake it off, <laughs> pack it on his feet. He kept on throwing that dirt, he shake it off. Pack it on his feet. <laughs> to finally, that old goat was able to walk out of that way on dry land. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad that man don't have to say so when you oh, yeah. died? How yeah. you gonna die? Mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm just glad that over 2,000 years ago, this same Jesus made his baby my way out of nowhere, my little of the valley. Mm -hmm. My bright and morning star. Yeah, yeah. Went to the cross yeah. between two thieves mm -hmm. and died for the sins of the whole world. Yeah, yeah. They took him down and placed him in a borrowed tomb because mm -hmm. he wasn't needed that long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but all day Friday yeah. and all day Saturday, all right. mm -hmm. he stayed down in this, in this tomb. Yeah. But early, early, I said early, early, early Sunday morning, right. he got up. With all power, all power in his hands. Right. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Yeah. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Mercy. But Jesus bowed the cross alone, oh, no. and all the world go free. Yeah. No, there's a cross for everyone. everyone. And, and, and I know there's a cross for Hallelujah. me. You see, amazing grace. Ooh. How sweet the sound yes. that saved a wretch like me. me. See, I once was lost, yeah. but now I'm found. Hallelujah. I was blind, but now I see. And one day I, I had prayed and I asked people to pray for me. And I just, I just pitted on myself. I, once, but as I was walking there one day, the law said, Reverend Page, get out that wheelchair. <laughs> I'd walk. And I got out that wheelchair. Yes, yes. And I walked. And I've been walking there ever since. Praise My wife can protect today. I've been, I've been out there. I've been, I've been blowing leaves. I've been, I've been uh, picking up acorns. I've been just doing everything. Because I always said, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. And I believe he would do it. Yes. And he'll do the same for you as he's done for me. Hallelujah. So all we got to do is just believe. Mm -hmm. Believe that he will. And when you say something long enough and you start believing, it, and uh, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. Hallelujah. And he's the reason for our lives. Mm -hmm. So we gotta just keep on going. When things look that look bad for you, just look up toward heaven and say, Jesus, yes, yes. Jesus. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Yes. And all oh, the joy. Yes. 
that floods my soul. You see, something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And that's not theory. That's not philosophy. Mm -hmm. You gotta be the priest and handing me his cane. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 We thank God for reminders for for sermons preached by the word, but also sermons preached by life, mm -hmm. by the evidence of God's healing hand, mm -hmm. by the evidence uh, that God can get you up out of a sick bed and that you walk around the pulpit hoop a little bit. Mm -hmm. We thank God for those reminders because it it serves to it serves to awaken in us. Yeah potentially the courage to walk by faith that we have not been walking. And it might be that there's somebody in this place who, who feels that tug on their soul, who, who hears a whisper of a still small voice inviting you to walk a little closer with Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. But there's another voice telling you that God ain't gonna do nothing for you. <laughs> God ain't gonna forgive you. I mean, God forgiving you after all the dirt you've done, that it be like God taking somebody who couldn't get out of bed and bringing them up in the pulpit and let them walk around and preach. Mm. But won't he do? Yeah. Yes. yes. And so if you are, you are with us by whatever way you are joining us and and God has been calling you to him. Let me invite you at this time to accept God's invitation. Come to Jesus. It doesn't matter if you know all the right words to say. It doesn't matter if you don't have any words other than in your heart to say, Lord, I've sinned and I'm sorry and I need you, Jesus. He will forgive you. Maybe you are hearing this and and. You've walked with Jesus and you've given your life to Christ, but, but your life has not stayed on track and you've gotten away from him. The same Lord that saved you still wants to restore you. Come to him. And if there are people telling you that you've gone too far astray, if there's a voice in your head telling you that you have done too much wrong, and God won't forgive you. God won't accept you back. Let me just remind you. Won't he do? Or maybe you there's something God has put on your heart. And I'm, not every calling is a call into the pulpit, but, but there's something that you know you're supposed to do. And it may be some way that you're supposed to demonstrate God's grace in the academic or career environment you're in. It may be it may be something you got to confront in your family, in your heart. It may be some ministry that you have to engage in more deeply. It may be an idea that God's put in your heart that you've been afraid to act on. But you know it's God pulling you in that. But there's another contrary voice telling you that it's too hard, it's too much, it's it's too different. It's too out there. God is not going to make that happen. But I say again, won't he do it? <laughs> so whatever it is, whatever it is, having heard the word from this preacher, the doors of God's kingdom are open to you to come, to be redeemed, to be saved, to be restored be anointed for the work that God is calling you to do. Is there one who will come now? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one?